Good day, everybody. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm Susie, and we've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. We are going to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to look at the news, overall market, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and we're going to look at questions and answers. So today, Indonesia's tech firm, Go to buys a local crypto exchange for $8.4 million by Usha, and it's today, August 30th, 2022, on cryptonomics.com. Go to Go Jet, Tokopedia TBK, Go to acquires local crypto exchange PT Crypto Maxima coin to diversify its services and enter the cryptocurrency market. Go to informed the stock market regulator that it had purchased all of PT Crypto Maxima Coins shares for 124.8 billion rupees, 8.38 million. According to a statement on Monday, we believe that blockchain technology may play. I am so sorry, guys. May play a mainstream role in the future of finance. GoTo Group announced a more considerable operating loss for the second quarter, a setback in its attempt to persuade investors of its viability. The Jakarta-based company reported a pro forma loss of 3.9 trillion, trillion rupees compared to an adjusted loss before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization of 4.14 trillion rupees. That's $279 million. And that was on Tuesday. Pro forma gross sales increased by 45% to 5.5 trillion rupees, including increased demand online. Earlier this year, the tech company collected 1.1 billion in an IPO and stated that the deal was a step toward becoming a diverse money management center. Indonesia's Commodity Futures Trading Regulatory Agency. However, the IT company did not reveal any further plans for the recently purchased corporation. One of the 25 current cryptocurrency exchanges given licenses by Indonesia's Commodity Futures Trading Regulatory Agency, or BAPEPTI, is PT Crypto Maxima Coin. According to data from the agency, cryptocurrency has become more prevalent in Southeast Asia's largest economy with transactions involving crypto assets increasing by more than 1,000% in 2021 to 859.4 trillion rupees. That's $57.70 billion from a year earlier. Next on our news is Argentina Providence allows residents to pay taxes in Tether. The author is Dimitar on CryptoPotato.com. Authorities of the Mendoza Providence reportedly enabled citizens to pay government fees and taxes in cryptocurrencies. The region's tax administration described the move as the strategic objective of modernization and innovation, could give taxpayers different means to comply with their tax obligations. Contrary to Mendoza's pro-crypto stance, Argentina's central bank is not so much in favor of the industry. Earlier this year, it banned domestic financial institutions from facilitating digital asset services. According to a local report, settling taxes in cryptocurrencies instead of pesos became possible in one of the largest provinces in Argentina, Mendoza. Initially, the region's authorities will accept payments in Tether, USDT, while at a later stage, it plans to add more digital assets as an option. Taxpayers can use popular crypto wallets such as Binance, OneBit, Bitso, Ripio, Bybit, and Lemon Cash. In April this year, the lawmakers of Buenos Aires also considered something similar. Mayor Horacio Rodriguez Loretta stated that the capital aims to digitize its administration processes, adding that blockchain technology will play a key role. He also hinted that citizens might get the chance to pay their taxes in cryptocurrencies in the near future. And we're going to work to facilitate the payment of taxes, the ninth measure of this plan. 
Together with the leading companies, we are working so that those who wish can pay their taxes in cryptocurrencies. It is worth noting, though, that the Central Bank of Argentina Republic, BCRA, is not so supportive of the digital asset sector. Not long ago, it prohibited local banks from offering cryptocurrency services to clients. The measure ordered by the Board of Directors of BCRA seeks to mitigate the risks associated with operations with these assets that could be generated for users of financial services and the financial system as a whole, the entity stated. And last, a little bit about Ethereum. Ethereum could plummet below 1,000, Bloomberg. This is great news for people that are still in the accumulation stage. The author was Dimitar, and this is on the CryptoBasic.com. Ethereum could plummet below 1,000, according to Bloomberg technical experts. Ether remains at the mercy of the bears and the rest of the market, a trend that has persisted in this cycle. The second largest cryptocurrency by market cap has been hit hard by the unyielding bear market. A Bloomberg analysis forecast a fall below $1,000 for Ethereum, despite its recent comeback from the weekend's lows. Bloomberg analysts forecast a crash below $1,000 for Ethereum. Bloomberg technical analysis analysts are expecting the price of Ether to decline further. This is largely due to the volatility of Ether's price in an otherwise bearish market condition. Technical indicators on momentum and price trends show that the tokens tumble from a peak about $2,000 in mid-August to the current zone near $1,500 is likely to continue, the Bloomberg report says. Ether has been largely outperforming Bitcoin of late, as sentiments in the Ethereum community remain bullish due to the up-and-coming merge. Notwithstanding, this has not granted the asset any immunity to the recent appropriate macroeconomic conditions. Ether had established promising support at its 50-day moving average. Nonetheless, following the market downturn, the asset broke below the support, indicating risk of a further collapse. Katie Stockton, the financial consultant, Fairly Strategy co-founder, highlighted these risks. She further pointed out that the weekly stochastics bearish signal, which is declining first for the first time in five months, as the market declines began on August 25th, Ether broke below $1,500 support the next day. The unfavorable speech from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell further aggravated the whole situation. Ether fell to $1,429 on Monday, its lowest level in August. This asset has since then made some promising movements but these could be hitting a roadblock soon. If the Bloomberg analyst forecast materializes, Ether could see itself below its major, major support of $1,000 for the first time in over two months. Ether has gained by 5% in the past 24 hours at the time of writing and currently trades at 1,570. So we're gonna jump in and check out the market. First, we'll look at the Bitcoin and the Ethereum market cap, along with what the total market cap in crypto land is. So last week, guys, we saw the total cryptocurrency market cap was over $1 trillion. And currently today, it's at $967 billion. You can see this is a seven-day chart on coinmarketcap.com. And so seven days ago, it looks like we we're at 1.03. And then it happened. The upward swing went downward. And we're currently over on the right hand corner where you can see the arrow. We are at the 967 billion mark. So let's move on. Here is for my visual learners. This is a one week performance chart in the market cap block size form. So you can see that Bitcoin dominance is still at 38.22%. It was at 38% last week. So Bitcoin's market capitalization percentages is still maintaining. We have Ethereum that is, uh, we don't see the market cap dominance, but you can see the block size is still, still standing strong. Uh, but Bitcoin for the one week is down 4.55%. Ethereum for the week is down 2.14%. 
notice that the green boxes are stable coins. Not all of them, but some of them. USDC is a stable coin. USDT Tether is a stable coin. BUSD is a stable coin on the Binance blockchain. We have some little coins that look like they went up. You could tell that by the dark, dark green. Green means that it went up. The three shades mean that the light shade means it's going up one step. The medium green means two steps. We can see Adam is medium green right there in between Ripple and Binance coin. That's the XRP and the BNB indicators. And then the dark green coins that you can see here are the bottom middle bit, BIT. On the right hand side box under other tokens, you can say XEC and the other ones are too small to see, All right? So this is a good time to watch these as they go down. I like to zone in at this time. This is more of an acquisition period waiting for things to hit the floor. So I'd be looking at Sol, AVAX, EOS, Uni, and the ones that are dark green to see when they actually hit the bottom. So if you, uh, want to check out the indicators that we're about to use, you can go to Crypto Mastery Online. That's CryptoMastery.online and you can subscribe to the indicators. So here is Bitcoin one week analysis that I took just a little bit ago. And you have in the top quarter of this sheet, you have the early reversal. And this is a one week. So each one of these bars stands for one week. So many, many weeks ago, the early reversal came in that it was going to go down. And the average true range is red, which means that collectively overall this time frame, it has been going down. And at this point, we don't have an early reversal coming in this week to give us hopes of Bitcoin going up. We have the trend indicator that's on a one week analysis. We have the trend indicator that did came the key came in four weeks ago and then resistance hit and it didn't get the upward momentum, the upper momentum wasn't strong enough to actually trigger the bell and the trend indicator to continue moving upward. And you can notice that the trend indicator line is red, so it's still in the downward zone. The signal line did get triggered right before that key came up, but you can see that signal line is still very tight. And when it gets tight without the space in between, it's when you usually say, hmm, there's a lot of resistance and it's, it's not, there's a good chance it may not move up. The TSI shows the two red arrows downward, and that's for the last two weeks. So that is where we're at with the trend strength indicator is downward. And the last indicator of volatility index, it's at, if you look to the right hand side of the words volatility index, you see a 40, a 20, and then a 5.27. The 5.27 is the actual number assigned to this volatility level. And it's meaning that this is oversold. So we are still in the oversold zone. Not normal for Bitcoin, but it is what it is. So we're still waiting on Bitcoin um, to continue to bottom out to get to the acquisition stage. So here we have Ethereum. I made it bigger so we can do more of a, a current day analysis. So the early reversal on Ethereum is still downward spiral at this point. The average true range is still red, just like Bitcoin. The trend, however, in the last few weeks, again, this is a one week chart. One, two, three, four, five, six. about six weeks ago, key came in, then the bell, then the one, but the two and the three did not follow the one. And the trend line was green and we'll look forward to see what's happening after this week with those articles, knowing a little bit of uh, backstory of, of Ethereum. Now you also have, so, so at this point, as far as the trend goes, it hasn't switched to complete red, and it, we may have some more momentum going on in that because of that merge being happening right now. The signal line is still not, it, it's, it's close. It's not as far away as we would want it to be, to, to see that this is moving upward, but it, you know, it is what it is. It's still at this almost like a sideways. And then the trend strength indicator that is tightened up to two, which indicates that it is most likely gonna go down. And then you have the volatility index. I put a little line next to that one. It's at a 16.08. So the volatility index is still in the oversold zone. 
However, it's not as low as Bitcoin is. All right, so in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at some hot movers in the basket. So I have a watch list on TradingView, and you can organize your watch list by percentage of change, the amount of change in the price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what's ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. These coins are up for the day, but I always look for the coins on the floor to be ready for my next buy. So today we have PLU USD. That one, when checked with their radar, both the one week and the one day are up in the green zone. Now, beyond that, we have the combo, which this is how I indicate on my watch list what is actually, if if the week is up or the day is up, but the, ops, the opposite one is down, I code it as orange. So it's just still not consistently going in one direction on two simultaneous time frames, but within that, realm the ones that are up temporarily which would be on the one hour chart the vgx usd is up ethereum bitcoin nmr and busd usd so we're going to look at the crypto screener and this was taken just a little bit ago with taking into consideration coinbase coins and just what is in the strong buy or buy zone so we'll take a quick look on these charts live and see what is going on and we'll take into consideration all the indicators. Just a quick review on crypto screener. You can filter them out by Coinbase and all this is in the crypto mastery.online membership pages. So you'll go over this there. I just want to give you a quick slide. So again, you go to cryptomastery.online and you'll get a more in-depth review of TradingView and the indicators. These are some slides of what indicators you got. Volatility, early reversal, dynamic ATR, trend, trend strength, radar, and signal line. And then within the pages of those indicators in the members area, you'll have a better understanding of what they are. So I'll just quickly go through these slides and we're gonna jump on to the live charts. Again, cryptomastery.online and that will get you to a subscription to get into these actual indicators. So now we're gonna go live on the charts and we're gonna look at some coins and take some questions. So if you guys wanna let us know what is if you have any questions, do you have any coins you want us to do analysis with, let us know. Hi, Joe. How are you today? Hi, Susie. Doing well. Um, you know, there's a, a couple coins in here I want to show in particular. Um, and right. for anyone new that's following along, uh, where I always like to start at is inside this crypto screener here, right where you're at. And... Uh, First coin here, and today we have uh, ERI is YFII for USD. Uh, the the YFI? No, it, oh, okay. it has two. All right, YFII. So. Here you go. Give me what, do you mind really quick? I'm just going to make sure I have this on my watch list. I, have, I want to make sure you guys, yeah. So I want to just mention really quick to everybody, Coinbase did have some new coins that came in. And just want to make sure that you want to add them to your watch list if, if you are using Coinbase as your go-to exchange. Okay. So here's our chart. Looks like we were looking at this earlier. So I will, I will take my my indicators off. Now, you know, one of the things in particular I just want to show is, is if you make the chart a little bit tighter, Susie, uh, other way. Oh, like big, like open it or uh, like how yeah, do you want to show? Yeah, that way. I, I just wanted to show in here, keep going, 
when the last time we like, had an uptrend, and that's when the moving average turned green, it looks like it was right there in June. So, like, if you take a look over there at June on the trend indicator, the entry came in right here. So, here's the trend indicator, guys, right here. Yeah. Oh, so, like, right I, here where it changed. Yeah, right when we first started to turn green, right? And I'm using the trend indicator because this is generally your last confirmation to get on board. You could find that one at 414% in 46 days. Yeah. Now, in this case point, right, there's a couple of things uh, I'd like to call your attention to. Is one is that volatility index. Right? That's down there below the 20. Yeah. So right there, that's a check. Then in addition to that, we have the first green dot on the TS side. Right now, here, this, yeah. now this TSI has given its first green dot And what's significant about this is is that if you take a look in here, if you go back, Susie, and take a look at the ERI, the ERI trigger. Right so, here, guys. Yeah. And you're not going to get this uh, type of setup um, where you have the TSI and the ERI the same day um, say yes. but in certain case points, it does happen, and this is something significant today that has happened. Now, what are we waiting for? So we're waiting for the signal line right now, and we're also waiting for the trend indicator. So right now, we have three out of five that has already happened. And the way this works in this crypto is that you can scale in. What I do is I always scale in, scale in, scale in, scale out. I, I never go 100% on one trade. I mean, you know, the whole thing is, is that you, you're never going to have 100% set up to know. There's always going to be that 1% risk that it may not work out and everything looks perfect. But there is a high chance that we will get follow through and if it does now you're there now you are able to capitalize on a possible significant trend because if it goes green on the trend indicator it may go green for maybe the beginning of september because you know we're coming into a new month and what you'll notice like as you've been following along is that each month when it comes to the end of the month there's always a new opportunity in this crypto so the crypto market doesn't solely revolve around Bitcoin. You now, um, the Bitcoin and the Ethereum, they're kind of doing something a little bit different right now. Um, but uh, right now, there's other opportunities that these tools in there are designed to show um, and present. And, and that right there is significant. So we're waiting for the uh, signal line and we're also waiting for the trend indicator. So uh, that's. Uh, you know, a great setup that we have here, I say. Okay, and you got that added to the watch list, right, Susie? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go to another one, right? And this is uh, Link BTC. And it just so happens that there's a bunch of stuff in there, which is actually... Um, has evolved and uh, this one here uh, we don't have that volatility index so we don't have it as a, a perfect uh, as, the, as the other coin was but what we do have in significant is that yesterday we had the ERI and today 
here you go, the first green dot on the TI side. And, and that's what I'm really looking for, is that TSI. And that bar then closes at the end of the day. So to make sure that that's a green dot, I have to check that back again after 5 o'clock because that's the closing bar of the daily. And then that'll give me my confirmation um, that it is a green dot. And then now what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for the signal line. Mm -hmm. I just wrote check back at 5 p.m. at the closing of the day just to make sure that you get another green dot, the consistency of the one day momentum. All right. So and we're so, also waiting for the uh, signal line, Susie, and waiting for the trend indicator. Okay. Do you guys have any questions so far? You know, and, and it was just like within the day a part of that TSI. I always so find that actually, interesting. How about I just set a quick, a quick alert so we can add our alert and just say one day link being purchased with BTC signal line grain. And then I'm just typing these notes to myself so that I know what it means. So when this email comes to me, I'll know what to do. So the signal line alert is set, and then I can add alert on the trend. And I'm going to say um, trend one day link BTC trend upward. And I'm telling that to myself because I'll understand what that means. So you say it in whatever words you know. So I've got an alert set for both of these. So I know when they start, when everything is in sync and all stars, I would say, are aligned, then that's the time to to jump in slowly. I'll, I'll get in. Anything else you want me to look at, Joe? Well, uh, yeah, sure. Um, now that we got that one done, I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of stuff today. <laughs> okay, right. the next one is is the uh, ZEN BTC. It's just like as you're talking, I'm I'm looking at the, the uh, Bitcoin, and, and we'll after we do this one, we'll go to Bitcoin. But if you notice that, uh, you know the um, that, that the suffix, this is ZEN slash BTC, and sometimes when you get uh, significant uh, flow or outflow out of the uh, BTC, then we see the money move into these coins. You know, and uh, I, 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 you know, and this is what I noticed just following the technology. I'm, I'm good at interpreting the technology. So as, as you're seeing it here, I'm just constantly waiting for things to happen. So I'm, I'm reacting, or I'm waiting. Reacting and waiting, and, the, and and every time the market comes to me because all my trades are within uh, my setups, like well, exactly what I'm showing you. Like I don't know how far the market's going to go, but there's always going to be that that risk. Like there's never going to be that hundred percent trade, but you don't need to you don't need to have a hundred percent trade to have fun. And for this to be a rewarding business, all you have to do is just get on base. You know, you don't have to get up to the plate and try to hit a home run every day. You use the technology, and um, there's always some type of opportunity within a 30 or 60 day period that you'll have a, a shot. 
uh, and uh, you'll be able the tools will show the market cycle and that's what we're doing in here in these lessons we're showing in here how the tools and the technology show the change in, in cycle this is the value the, the value of this understanding and after you see this repetitiously then you become better at it um, in this case point yesterday yeah yeah there you go so you know this was the same example in here yesterday we had the TSI and we had the first well we had the first green dot on the TSI and we had the ERI and the next day she went a little further you, you, you're never gonna know how far she's gonna go nobody is but. Well, let's just zone in on this look at this from when the the early reversal came in so it went up eight percent in one day yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's significant so this one here might be on its way to possibly put a new high into the you know back to that high that it went to on the 15th of july yeah yeah i do want to point out something so look at the candlestick colors guys they're no longer red so this one is out of the oversold zone but back here when it went really low to let's just say right now it went up 50 percent since that red zone so earlier today i got really excited saying hey, when we're on that coin 360 heat map showing all the red, when I say it's an acquisitions, an acquisitioner's paradise, it, this is what I mean. Like when you get these coins and they're in the red zone, magic things happen after the floor. <laughs> like if we go back to this point where there was, there was a floor here and going up to like this, that's 42% in eight days. So this one, you are all showing great signs of moving upward, but uh, you know, I know we get scared of when things go in the red. You want to make sure the project is. I always think like, oh my gosh, is this project going to keep going, or is this the last days of its existence? <laughs> so it is definitely a risk um, when you get into that red zone. But I, I do want to circle back to the chart we looked at just verbally on Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're both in that red zone, so. Using Zen as an example of the movement it had again, that and what potentials when you get those red indicators here in the early reversal chart, there's a potential big significant reward at the end of of getting it. As I said, when there's blood in the streets, here is an example. It was 78 days, but it went up 45 percent. So, just an idea, just to keep keep your perspective. Um, there just it, it's a matter of having stamina and tolerance to continue to hold it through all these mini waves all right you got another one joe that you want us to look at yeah so I, look at you know that makes sense you know it, the whole thing is is you know i just want to say one thing in, in addition to what you said is is that that trend indicator is really what you need right it's like you know when the market turn first puts its bottom in you have to have more than one way to detect this could be a potential bottom that's the purpose of having more than one chart overlay each one of these chart overlays are doing each a different type of math so you're searching the system is searching in here for a potential bottom now when we do get that potential bottom the trend indicator is important because you need uh the trend you need it to turn green and you need it to start uh, putting in a higher high. So once you get positioned in here from the other uh, chart overlays, I mean, sometimes they all happen at the same time. But generally, the trend indicator is your last chance to get on board that train before it goes. Okay. So now here's I another one. Go ahead. Can we tell them about this alert that just popped up? So. I, I set this alert and it, it just happened. So that's the that's what the alerts will look like once you when you set them and they go off on your computer. And we just set that link alert. All right, well, we can circle back to that one. 
later. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean after- keep in mind that if you, I just wanted to say that if you're on a daily chart and it doesn't complete the bar to the end of the bar at five o'clock, and if you set that alert intraday, it, it may keep going off because it's intraday. You see what I mean, Susie? So the thing is, is that um, on the daily chart, now if you were on a 60 minute, it would be different, you know, or a shorter time frame. But when it comes to the daily, you know, the, the at, five, at five o'clock is when you get the final, I believe the final print of that bar. And then once your alert goes off, guys, you come back to your alert and you just press play to restart the alerts. So if, depending on the subscription you have in TradingView, they're going to do different, you have different amenities or uh, certain things. And one of, if you get that top of the line TradingView account, then what that does is you never have to reset your alerts. It just resets itself for you. But if not, then you have to come back here and you have to keep, you have to press play. So they keep going. Okay. So in the alert level is where the, to get to your alerts, you hit that alert box and then get back to your watch list. You go here. Okay. So, so you know, uh, you know go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well uh, NMR, oh. I, just you, I used the radar this morning to, to find some great coins and um, this one, NMR, Ethereum, and these three are showing up right now. Whatever, we can look at that later. What one would you want to look at? Uh, well, look, that's a good one right there. I mean, look, it's the daily. We got an ERI print right there. That's a good find, Susie. So you found that one this morning? I found it Very from good. using your radar. And I liked it because <laughs> all three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it was, um, you know, the goal is to go through your watch list every day. And I know we didn't do that today, so maybe we'll go show that in a little bit. Um, but go ahead, tell them why you like this one, Joe. Well, I mean, look, I, I didn't, I, mean, I, I actually didn't have this on my list, right? But it's, I, I, you, but you pulled it up, and this is just the way I like it. I mean, look. You got the ERI today, right? Um, but before let's let's uh, let's let's look at what the volatility index is doing. So the volatility index is down here at the bottom, down to twenty, and we're waiting. There you go, waiting for the TSI green. And you know you can set yeah. your alert for that if you right click on that, um, on the uh, the. The add alert, you'll see in there. If you want to set green. your alert only for the next time it turns green, then you put that right there. So I was saying that, you know, when it gets to the end of the month, it's usually, you know, you see the money, you know, you know, moving. You see the money moving around at the end of the month. And then it kind of moves. Okay, I'm not need to do that. Um, oh no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, so we like, have in here. <laughs> I just, um, let's see. Uh, I just messed up my TSI. Okay, so if that happens, guys, watch. You just re-add it. There we go. And then you can press your arrows here. I just like my charts to organize this way. So we still have our alert set. So go ahead, Joe. What else would you want to say? Okay. Well, well I just wanted to say is that we have a check in the volatility index, right? And we're waiting for the TSI. Yeah, and waiting for the signal line. So, so on this example here, uh, out of five, we have two out of five that has happened. We got the ERI, which is a, a check, and we got the volatility index check. And then now we're waiting for the the TSI, the signal line, and the trend. So you can set your alerts on all three of those. And this could be, 
you, you know, um, something in here we, we that we want to keep an eye on uh, that may really, you know, turn here. I don't know what this coin is. I have to take a look at it more. It's just, uh, uh, it looks like when it turns, you got to be fast. Like a lot of these coins in here, what I learned from experience is that if you're in a profit, get out. <laughs> take the money. Take the money and run, like Kenny Rogers yeah. said. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's the wild west. It's like the, the crypto run. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Have the key. It's actually, I would say the right way to say it is all hands on deck. And, you know, don't get in unless you're really ready to be very conscientious of your portfolio and you're ready to do your own money management. But if you do dedicate, an appropriate amount of time and energy into it, then you're going to do okay. You're going to do great. It's just that you have to actually focus on it a little bit at the time or stay tuned to your technology and your indicators and your emails. So I would say stay on top of the emails that are linked to your trading view accounts so you could set your alerts. And then some of these things you may just use your, this, this indicator is one of my favorites because these Keltner bands will tell you what the average is. So you have great expectations and you could actually maybe purchase something and set your, your sell levels once you buy it. So here, you know, like if you're getting in down in this bottom Keltner, then you may say, well, I just, and this can't be financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, but if you get in down here and you see this Keltner band is right, this the first line up, then what do we say? pigs get fat but hogs get slaughtered so don't go for the slaughter levels <laughs> you know like have your sell sell order in for just the top band and then bam look you can see if you had done that this day one and then you sold right here a little bit of a little bit of profit then you would have still made out because it went up hit that top band and went back down and then if you get down to here again then if you would have set on this point, your sell order just to the top of this band was sold. And then again, you buy, put your buy order in down here. And then if you had put in your sell order in right here, it would have happened. Right? So, I mean, there's that's like three buys just within this one counter band that could have, could have been successful for you just by going just right on these averages. And then, you know, if you would have put it up here, then that's, you got to have some stamina. You got to have some time on your side to hold. You got to make sure that the weather or the, the, the waves in crypto are going to, you know, be big enough to hit the top band. My theory. You have anything to add yeah, to that, Joe? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, you need to have a close above that middle band. And the thing is, is that like you need, uh, if that happens, you need that signal line to kick in. You need that, that trend indicator on the green to kick in. But that middle Kelter band, that's, it, it's, it's important because it's going to take uh, momentum for that to break. So it looks like today this just started to cross, but we, we didn't, we don't have this one here yet. But it's still a good find because that's what the ERI does. The URI is a starting point, and that's another one you can set your alert for. All the all the chart overlays, you can set your alerts for, for everything. And the idea of setting the alert is to stay organized. The more organized we are, the more likely we're going to have success because now we have the right expectation on the trade. And and if we put trades on and we have um, we have the clues that show themselves. The expectation is we have everything that we need for reward. So, um, yeah, so Susie, great find here. The one that I was looking at here was actually CRV BTC. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> I've had that so many times, I feel like. <laughs> All right, this is great. Look, we got ERI. Early reversal indicator, and oh, I want to want to 
Can I say something about this, Joe? Very exciting. Sure. Is, is that, guys, look, the average true range actually has been going on since this date. So I'm going to go to the toolbar. This is my favorite line, the vertical line, just because it goes through all of the indicators. And then you get a date down here. So this CRV has been green in the average, average true range since July 1st, 2022. So that's a big range. So even though the early, this one indicator up here has two indicators built in with multiple things going on. So this is the average true range and the early reversal. So we haven't really talked about that today. Is This entry is the average true range saying this. And you can see this green line under here is part of this entry area. And then inside of the average true range, you have the early reversal indicators showing the mini mini waves inside of this one average true range going up also notice that these bars are black they're not red and they're not green so black is what we call let the cake bake zone here on the volatility index and so this one hasn't made it down to the oversold so someone out there really likes this is bullish on it and, and, and people stay in it. So this is something you may want to look into on multiple perspectives as far as fundamentals, what's going on. You could see as equal amount of time it's been up in the oversold zone. It actually had some time in the, I mean the overbought zone. This is overbought, sorry. But it had a lot of time in the oversold zone. So just for kicks and giggles, let's just go down here. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. It's a silly word, but for down here, look at this was when it was in the lowest point on the oversold zone. I want you to just understand the significance of the red oversold zone in the volatility index. So if we take our, this is the ruler, and take it from that oversold zone to now, that went up 66% in 79 days. So I want you guys to understand the importance of the red the, the candlesticks being red because they really, I really truly believe like when you're getting it in red and when it's below the Keltner band, even though it seems like that, you know, the win is so far away, ultimately it's just doesn't have to move much to, to get it to where you're going to be profit. And then once it gets into these other zones, so this is current price 79, but let's just go from that one oversold on June 12th to maybe the highest of the points. It looks like this one. That's 106% in 41 days. When this average true range slash early reversal indicators area gets into the green candlesticks, that's when you really want to consider taking profit because once it goes green, after green, it goes back to black and back to red. It's just a cycle, a simple cycle. So this this is black and these are green. So green is our take profit zone and red is the ultimate acquisition zone, in my opinion. Do you want to add to that, Joe, or what's your opinion on that? Look, that's a very well explained. Makes sense. Um, you know, really, you know, there's always going to be two types of traders. It's good in there to be a hoiler and have a position and hold for the long term. And then uh, it's also good in there to swing trade uh, within uh, uh, your position that you have. And with this technology in here, that trend indicator, when you see it go green and you see the colors on the bars go green, that's showing you the trend. And the whole the whole idea is is, is that we need to uh, trend trade. Trend trading equals success. That's like they say, the trend is your friend. So, you know, we get the positioning in here from the chart overlays. We get the ERI that triggers. We could have the uh, TSI, like in this case point, that you'd be waiting for the TSI to come in, but. When that trend indicator comes in, that's the beginning of a new wave, a possible new wave. And that new wave may last, as you look at the, 
the last wave, Susie, that wave lasted probably about a couple of weeks. So we're coming into September, and we may see the beginning of September, we may see another wave up. Let's see. This one, the, the first wave we see was March 29, 2022 to April 27. That went up 18%. was only 29 days. But then this wave is still happening, though. Like, here's the entry. It came in right here. And the average true range hasn't stopped yet. So it's up 59% over the last 60 days. And the average true range is still remaining green on that indicator. And then you have, but on the trend, are you thinking, like, are you meaning the wave, like the trend wave? Yeah, so have, uh, you know, like when it turned up right there, exactly. Okay. So on the trend, so June 20th, 2022, all the way up to here, 110% in 39 days. And I want you to look at this, Susie, as being like the big kahuna, right? <laughs> this is the big wave. <laughs> the, the big wave yeah, is on the is. trend indicator. You got all these little small waves, and then you got the big kahuna, the big wave, which is this one. And you don't really want to miss this one. This is the last chance um, before that train leaves the station. And once it starts the number count, it kind of starts to move in a way where it's unpredictable. Whereas is that you go to sleep and then it could be up, you know, a ridiculous amount in the morning. So yeah, it's only uh, days. Yeah, it's fast. But can, can we be? Can I be negative, Nelly, and say? But on the flip side, if you don't follow the indicators and you say, "Ah, everything's going to be okay." rainbows and butterflies the world is the way it is then you're going to get caught in a correction and then and if you didn't like notice that the key went in but then the one didn't repeat itself and that the trend line turned red then you're down 22 percent i mean but collectively though let's just okay but on a on a balanced perspective if you got in on that key here and you you didn't get out then you still would have made 63% from this down play down right here. So it's just sometimes you're like, oh man, like I know I had CRO at a point and I thought my son's like, sell mom. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to sell yet. <laughs> I, went, I went long. I became a hog and I could have sold it and made so much more than I did. But now I decided to hold it and uh, I should have listened to my 15 year old, right? Um, where I did, I did downsize a little bit, but not as much as I should have. So, but even if you hadn't sold when it went to that all-time high, more recent high, you still, this person, if they got it down here, would have still been up 69%. So, I think that if you are a holder, if you if you buy, but but look at this, just so when you zone out, guys, it's if you would have purchased CRV back on June 20. 20th where is it it's in the volatility index red zone it's in the oversold zone um, all right do you want to say anything else about this let's see if we have any questions no questions everybody's quiet today they're just watching all right let's go to the next one if you want <laughs> uh, oh, wait, let's, uh, actually let's say um i'm gonna put a check mark on the ones that we have so this is looking good the trend of uh, form a check mark on the early reversal indicator. I'm going to put two checks here because we have the early reversal and we have the average true range. And then uh, the signal line, the signal line, again, let's zone in on that really quick. When it was so small, it looked really on top of each other, but you can double click on your indicator and make it look big like this. So I wanted to show you that there is a separation zone here. And uh, Looks, there's a lot of resistance here. You've noticed, guys, it goes up, it goes a little far, but then there's a little sell-off, a little sell-off. But it, ultimately, it's, it's maintaining its integrity on that upswing. So this one, it may be that pattern. Yeah, it, it gets a little. This was a good. It gets a little kinks in the in the upward climb. 
But I think those are all good signs. You just want to have something that has a lot of activity in it. So it's alive, that people know it, you know that marketing, whatever they're doing to market is working. Um, now, Joe, we did have the a red right here. We have a red TSI. So, and then it bounced back, but so we still need another green TSI to come in for the day. You see that? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. That's exactly correct. You know, and it looks like today it gave a key. So there might be a possibility that we may see over the next couple of days we get a bell alert. And then that, and then we may see, you know, if, if this is a, a a duck, right now it looks like a duck, you know, then we'll see the bell alert come on and then we'll see a new number one print. And, you know, this will be something that we can circle back to next week because if, if it starts the new numeric count, and triggers the signal, then she may start to move with the upper end of the culture band. Right. But I also want to let you guys know, as far as like being conscientious of the risk, is that it is in the middle of Keltner band and currently right here. So the next the next point to get to would be this area, which is uh, we're trading Bitcoin for CRV, so this isn't in dollars, but point. Zero 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 five six six two Bitcoin. So that is, so there's the next significant mark. Joe, I don't know if you, there's a little shuffling going on in the, in the noise. I don't know why that is. Okay, do you have any other thing you want to look at today? We have four well, more have minutes. More, uh, one more coin here, SKLDTC. And I, I just had one coin left. <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, very cool. That's beautiful. So, yeah. So in this one, in this case point, now that uh, volatility index, uh, that's what I would say is dangerously close. Where is that? Like that's so that's close enough for me. Like may never be perfect. Where it's all the way down there in the red, but. Um, you know, as soon as the uh, TSI starts to turn, uh, if you look above it, that's generally the first confirmation for me. So I had my alert set on this, and then this triggered. So we have a check with the volatility index, a check with the TSI. Right now, you're waiting for the signal line. And then we're waiting for the trend. All right. Okay. And the 60 minute, one hour, the four hour, the one day, they're all in line in the upward cycle. And then notice that the indicators are all black because we're just above that 20 mark on the volatility index. But the beautiful part, you are above the first Keltner band right here. And I'm just going to delete this really quick so we can see this. So the next stopping point I would say to check is right here, the second Keltner band. And then the third. But Joe, also, I just want to let them know there is a little risk because the average true range has has this coded as um, as red. So that means that the average true range is saying that it's going down. And you could see how the Keltner band, the Keltner band represents the average, the average of the point. So it's the average is going down. So you do want to wait for the average. You, you are waiting for the average true range too. Do you mind if I write that in here, Joe? Sure. So they just waiting for. And how, when you. Do you have any precedence, Joe, for like 
not doing a trade when the average tree range is not green? Or do you still go into some knowing that the average tree range is red? Well, look, the average tree range is, is a lagging, lagging indicator. It's good to know because it gives levels. And it gives like what they call a super cycle, right? It's just another big wave, right? But before we get to that wave, there's uh, the smaller waves, which is, um, the positioning that we have. So right now, in this case point, uh, we have five uh, chart overlays and we have three checks out of the five. So we could be scaling into our positioning uh, with uh, each one, each one of these. And then now we could be setting our alert for the signal line and setting our alert for the trend and looking for those to uh, confirm at which point uh, we'll have our final confirmation. So these are the two we're waiting on, guys. I just want you to see that. All right, let's see if there's any questions. Oh, now the question's coming. When <laughs> we have two minutes left. All right, KS says, do you ever look at volume when considering a particular market or coin? Trading volume. Oh, yeah, yeah, look, look, trading volume is important. I, I do look at it. Um, when it comes to these coins here in the crypto, sometimes that trading volume can be manipulated. So it, it really depends on what kind of coin, which coin that you're looking at, because there's a lot of manipulation depend, depending on what coin that you're trading. So it's um, it, it really depends on it, you know, because I've seen different case points where volume comes in. And, you, you know, what you do, Susie, is that you look for volume to confirm. Like volume breaks out like a trend, like the, the same way we're looking at the, this trend indicator. And, and you know what? That's a good question because next week um, I can put the volume up and we can talk about that, you know, and show it with examples for everyone. Um, volume breaks out just like these chart overlays does. The, the only thing with volume is it can be manipulated. So sometimes if you're waiting for volume, you may see volume spike and then the next bar, there's no volume, it all disappears. That's a manipulation. And, but then you'll see different case points where volume comes in and then you see confirmation. So, you know, we can discuss that next week. I think that's a great, um, that's a great topic to review um with uh next week's lesson good work i like that yeah i do want to mention something some of the most successful traders only really look at a few coins and they study those coins and they learn the heartbeat of those coins and that's all they're invested in and so i want you guys to just over the next week think about you know how many coins you can actually juggle at one time and you know ks if you're zoning in on one with volume zone in one that has a lot of movement in most both, both directions because once you understand that coin you get the rhythm and the heartbeat of that coin you'll know what to do and when to do it you may not always have a play that you can play and it may get a little boring because <laughs> you want to search for something that's hot and alive but Ultimately, if you know that coin left and right, up and down, you could probably make some good precise moves because you're tuning into one coin. And I've seen a great success in that too. So just wanted to put that out there because I know we do scan a lot of multiple coins, but the point of that is just to show you guys current examples so that you can get acclimated to the indicators. But I do hope that if you're beginning that you are zoning in on just one particular asset to focus on so that you can get in and get out and be successful and not too overwhelmed. And um, I don't want you to be spread thin. I want you to be able to focus on one. So you guys have a great trading week. And I'm glad that you're here and hopefully bring in some good questions and we'll see you next week for some volume. I can, Joe, remind me next week and I'll make some slides with the Coin360 showing the volume on the heat map. You guys can go to coin360.com and switch the the down arrow from market cap 
to volume. And just know that on the Coin360, that volume is showing you not just buys or sells, it's collectively both. So it doesn't mean that the volume means it's gonna go up. It just means that these somebody's selling and somebody's buying, if that makes sense. All right, so Joe, do you wanna say anything in closing? Uh, no, look, there's a, a, we'll, we'll circle back next week. We'll take a look at the volume and we'll see if we got follow through uh, in some of these examples that we went through today. Uh, good luck trading, everyone.